another day, another dollar. Thank the Lord for another 20 folk. God, I knew that was you. I'm just finishing up with the gym. Big money. I just hit 405 on the bench press. I'm feeling fucking excited, bang. That's, that's the easiest that shit's went up since probably like damn near a year ago. My strength, I'm getting my weight back up. So the program is working, man. We just gonna keep hustling, keep grinding, man. Quick video though. We talking about money saving hats financial tips man y'all know with these videos i'm all about trying to put people on to game give you some some knowledge some wisdom that's going to help you out and like that's going to help you to become a better person you know so we talking about like i say money saving tips to get ahead in life this is the first one man this is golden this is like the motherfucking epitome of finance and bettering yourself becoming wealthy always always pay yourself first no matter what you know what I'm saying? You get paid, you get your paycheck, you get some kind of inheritance, you get like a settlement, any kind of money that comes in that you probably work for, anything, especially if you work for the money, you know, your job, your 95, always pay yourself first. How do you pay yourself first? Make sure you, if you got like a job that offers a 401k, a retirement plan, you got your outside IRA retirement account, always put some money into that before you even see your check. You know what I'm saying? Always pay yourself first before you start paying the bills. I don't give a fuck if it's $10, $20, whatever you can afford. You got to always pay yourself first. You the most important worker, man. You know what I'm saying? So me, for instance, when I get my check, I automatically got 20% going into my retirement account. You know, then I work a lot of overtime. I'm a prison guard. I've been working in corrections for 13 years. I work a lot of overtime. So, you know, I make over six figures every year with the overtime. So a lot of times when I get paid, after I pay all my bills and stuff, it's like a thousand, two thousand dollars left over. So I put an additional thousand dollars into the stock market. I buy stocks. I buy crypto. Shit like that. I put some in my personal savings, my emergency savings account. Shit like that. But before I even get my check, I put, like I said, 20 percent goes into my retirement account. You know, then once my check comes, then I start paying the bills. You know, you can't put everybody else. Man, fuck them. The utility bills, the mortgage, the rent, all that shit, man. Put some aside for you first. You can't spend all the money on all the bills and ain't shit left over for you. You know, that's not how this shit work, man. You got to put you first. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you motherfucking saving some money, man. This is the next thing, man. This helps me out a lot. Make a grocery list when you go shopping. When I go to the grocery store, I always have a grocery list with me, man. That way I know exactly what I need so I'm not just going up and down the aisles just throwing shit in the cart. You know what I'm saying? That save you a whole lot of money. You know, if you the type to just go in there, you don't even know what you got in your refrigerator. You know, before I even leave the house, I look into my pantry. I look in the cabinet, seeing like what toiletries I need, what food I need, what I'm about to run out of. That way I already know I can write that shit down and I just check my list off, man, you know, and I, I stay within my budget, you know, that way, let's say your, uh, your budget, every time you go grocery shopping is $150, you got your list, you already know what you need to get. If you don't got no list, you just throwing shit in there. You're going to go over probably damn near every time. You're going to end up spending 200, 250, probably then 275. That's money you could have been putting towards something else. You know, paying off debt, paying yourself first, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? This is the next thing, man. Learn how to cook your own meals. If you the type of person that likes to go out to eat damn near every day, you work at like a bank or a nine to five job, y'all get like an hour lunch break and you go to happy hour every goddamn day, you burning a hole in your budget. You know what I'm saying? You gotta learn how to pack your food. I mean, see, I'm big into fitness anyway, so it's, it's natural for me to meal prep and to pack my food. And then like, as I mentioned, I work in the prison. So during the week when I'm doing my overtime, they got a staff dining lounge where they give us free food in there and shit. So I get a lot of food out of there. You know, I'm not saying not to go out to eat, I'm the biggest foodie, man. I love to go out to eat. You know, a lot of times I just go out to eat on, on on the weekends, my days off. During the week, you know, if I'm running short on food, you know, I've been working a lot of hours. I run on my meal preps. It's a subway I like to go to that's like five minutes from my job. You know, I get a sub, some Subway cookies, stuff like that. But for the most part, during the week, I'm locked in. I, I pack my food. You know, I got my snacks, my fruit, my waters, shit like that. You know, that way it keep me from going out you know, for every lunch break, you know, it ain't nothing. You see, you go out to your lunch break, you spend the 50, 60, $70 every time. Then it's like, damn, you look up, you done got down spent fucking a hundred, 
two hundred dollars for the week. You look, that's times that by four. That's goddamn damn eight hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole lot of fucking money. That's damn near a mortgage payment. You know what I'm saying? I remember back before I refinanced my house, my mortgage was down there like a thousand dollars. So you, if you spending that much money, you know, on a monthly basis, just like you burning a hole in your pocket, especially if you're trying to cut back on, you know, saving more money, trying to be better financially with your money. You got to look at where your money is going when it comes to going out to eat, dining. You know, you stop every morning, you spend $20 at McDonald's, shit like that. See where you can cut back at. That brings me up to my next point. You know what I'm saying? Learn how to cut the fluff and not try to take on any new bills as much as possible. What I mean by that, you know, say you got you know, you got all these different subscriptions. You know, you got the Netflix, Amazon, Hulu. You got this subscription to that, this subscription to this. You know, learn, it's learn, look at that shit, you know, and see what you don't need, what you ain't been using. Oh, I ain't used this shit in like six months, man. Let me go ahead and cancel that. That's probably $20, $30 right there every month. You know, times that by 12, that might be damn near a, uh, five, six, seven hundred dollars you could be saving. You could be putting towards something more productive, you know, being better use of your money. You know, me, when I, uh, say for instance, I pay something off, you know, like I got some debt, or I'll give y'all a great example right here. When I paid this car off, this is my first car I bought. When I finally paid the car note off, I didn't just run out and buy a whole nother car. You know, I waited like two years. You know, I drove this. I enjoyed having a paid off car. You know, I was taking that five, four hundred, five hundred dollars when I was uh, paying on the car payment and I was stacking that shit. I was putting it into investments, building up my savings. If I had other debts, paying them debts off faster. Then, you know, a couple years later, I was like, man, I want me another car now. You know, I went out and bought me a BMW. You know, I did the same same thing with that you know once i got that i paid that shit off and now you know both my cars paid off you know so i'm just enjoying not having a car payment shit like that and this is the next thing too i want to mention when it comes you know to cars man this will help you out a lot too when it comes to you know you buying a car you in the market to buy a new car i learned this the uh the hard way you know i bought a brand new car right and, and you know, this was my first car, my first real car I bought, where I, I bought it off the lot. It only had like 12 miles on it when I bought it, you know, Dodge Charger 2013. Once I paid it off, I realized, I'm like, man, I'd be better off just getting a certified pre-owned, you know? So, like I said, I wanted a BMW, right? So I went into the BMW dealership, and when I went in there, you know, I was looking at the new BMWs, like the X7, the X8, the X5. Man, them damn brand new BMWs was like ninety, eighty, ninety thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars. Man, he's breaking down the monthly payments. They was he was gonna be like, even if I put like ten thousand dollars down, I would still have to pay like seven, eight hundred dollars for my monthly car note. And to me, that was idiotic because, like I mentioned, my mortgage at the time was a thousand dollars. So I'm like. I can't justify having a, a car payment that's damn near more than my house payment. I'd rather go out and try to buy another house and have some real estate. You know, I'm renting that house out, some shit like that, before I justify spending that much money on a goddamn car, you know, that's going to go down in value. I'm all about putting money into something that's going to put more money in my pockets. That's the go. You want to buy shit that's going to de in, uh, increase your assets. You buy assets, not liabilities. That's what the rich and the wealthy do. They buy shit that brings them more money. They buy shit like real estate, motherfucking stocks, crypto, shit like that. They start a business. That's going to bring them more money. They don't, they don't try to spend majority of their money on stuff that goes down in value. A car, as soon as you drive the car off the lot, it starts to go down in value. You know, so it's like a money pit. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't buy a brand new BMW. I looked at, it was what, that was back in 2019. Nah, 2022 when I bought my BMW. So I looked at the certified pre-owned. This is the thing I want to put y'all on. This is some good game, you know, when it comes to certified pre-owned. Look into cars that's like two or three years old, but they're still under warranty. What that means is, you know, instead of you buying a brand new car, and like I say, as soon as you drive it off the lot, it drops like ten, twenty thousand dollars in value. Let somebody that's rich, wealthy people, they buy brand new cars a lot of times, celebrities, shit like that. They drive it for a year, then they trade it in. 
You know, ain't nothing wrong with the car. A lot of times they take care of the car, but you're gonna you're gonna be able to get the car at a discount. So the car that I bought, it was a, a BMW 2019 X4. The regular price, brand new, was like I think like seventy, damn near eighty thousand dollars. But because it was two, three years old, I was able to get it for like I think it was, at the time it was like maybe thirty-seven, forty thousand dollars. So you know it knocked off thirty, forty thousand dollars, you know, off the the car price. So me going forward, I would never buy a brand new car. You know, even if I was rich, I'd probably buy like a year or two old car. You know, long as it's under warranty. You know that means that if anything happens to it, you can still take it in as long as you. Know, Know, the car is under warranty you can take it back and they can fix it you know certain limitations on that check into it before you do that but that's a hack right there let me see what we got next man keep a spreadsheet with all your monthly bills and expenses man i'm big on this every time i get paid i always make a new spreadsheet i got a spreadsheet i don't have it on me but oh shit my fault my fault i'm finna goddamn knock the camera over my bad but i got a uh a spreadsheet it has all my monthly expenses, my mortgage, uh, my daughter's daycare, all the utility bills, how much I want to save, if I have any debts or, you know, any credit card payments at the time, uh, anything, any kind of upcoming expenses I may have. I write all that shit down because I need to see where all of my money is going. You know, I got to account for every dollar. If you don't account for every dollar that's coming in, somebody else is going to account for it. It's going to go to somebody else's pocket or it's going to go to an unnecessary bill, something you probably don't even need. So, you know, as long as you write, you know, if you got like the use a uh, Microsoft Excel, whatever you got to do, if you can see where all your money's going. And at the end of the month, if you win the green Meaning you got more money coming in that's going than that's going out, you good. If you spending more money than that's coming in, you're gonna go broke. You know, you're gonna be in debt every time. You're gonna be in the red. The I the goal is not to be in the red, it's to have money left over. So, you know, like I said, every time at the end of the month with me, I always got money left over. So I just try to be smart with that extra money and I just save and invest it. You know, I may treat myself a little bit go out to eat, maybe buy some extra cigars, stuff like that. But for the most part, I just try to be frugal, try to uh, stack as much as I can for a rainy day, man. You know what I'm saying? This is the last thing I'm gonna leave y'all with, man. This shit right here is fucking important too. You always wanna fucking live within your means, man. You know what I mean by that is you don't wanna be trying to keep up with the Joneses. You don't want a motherfucker be trying to live above your means. You know, just because you see somebody else, your neighbors down the street, they bought the newest car or they just uh, bought that new fishing boat, shit like that. You got to stay and focus on what you got going on. See, me, I always focus on what's going on in my household. You know, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I don't try to go above and beyond my means. I stay within my, my income bracket. You know, I ain't out here, you know, like I said, I may make six figures, you know, but I don't mean I can go out here and just be buying Gucci, Fendi, Prada, uh, leasing the newest sports car, no shit like that. Because you see it all the time. You see millionaires fucking go broke all the time because they spending too much money they they living too lavish they doing bad investments they living they lending their friends and family out money and they think it's never ending man nah hell nah you know like i said i'm trying to be in the game and i want to stay wealthy once i get wealthy i want to stay wealthy i don't just want to get rich and then i'm out here blowing money and then fucking go broke you know so you know i don't like i said i don't look and try to compare myself to other people for all you know the person you see with that brand new car or this and that, man, they probably, they could be knee deep in debt. They not telling you that, but they could be goddamn up the uh, debt in their eyeballs financing that shit on credit. You know what I'm saying? They might not even, the person that you see, you know, that may just dress regular, they drive around an old ass car that's 10, 15 years old. They could probably be a multi-millionaire. You probably will never know it. That's just because they're not flashy and they probably got their money working for it. They don't wear their money. They got their money working for them. You know what I'm saying? So you got to learn to look beyond the eye. You know, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, always try to stay within your means. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, this is the last thing I'm going to leave y'all with, too, man. You know, don't fall into that peer pressure, you know, of uh, what your friends and your family trying to, you know, people want to uh, borrow money and shit like that. I don't let people borrow money, man. Hell no. Nah. And if I do, if it's like my day one, some friends, shit like that, it's a gift. It's a one-time gift, man. If you constantly giving money to people, letting people borrow money, shit like that, man, it's like they going to come to expect it. And then it's like it creates a problem. A lot of times I've I seen this happen over the years. You go, they don't pay you back. 
then you go to ask for your money back and then it's like all of a sudden it's like it's a it's some drama or it's a beef because they you asking somebody for your own money back so just avoid all that man shit i'm i'm not the bank go get a loan or some shit man you know like i say if i do get somebody some money this a one-time gift i'm not expecting it back but if you say you're gonna pay me back you know honor just honor in your words man be a man or a woman of your word and pay somebody back if i ever borrow some shit from somebody you know what i'm saying i'm gonna pay them back promptly you know the bank you borrow some money from the bank they expect their money back whatever you signed on the contract you know what i'm saying otherwise they're gonna go after your assets or they're gonna they're gonna uh put it on your your goddamn account showing that's delinquent you know your credit gonna be fucked up you know what I'm saying? Y'all like this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel at the Ghetto Body Butter. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok at the Ghetto Body Butter. I got the merchandise for sale. This one of my gym shirts right here. Eminem Life, Money and Muscles, man. Let's get right, man. Y'all got any comments, questions, concerns, any ideas or topics for future videos? Drop a comment. I'll be sure to get back with you as soon as I can. Y'all know how we coming. Let's get motivated.